Hey everyone! I'm here to do a wrap-up for the last two months of reading. We're going to cover what I read in April and May. I'm going to go ahead and preface this by saying there were a lot of very middle-of-the-road reads. I don't think any of these are going to be making it into my top five, but we'll double check. I'm just going to go in the order I read things this month. I think I did it from lowest to highest last time, but I d it doesn't matter with these. First one was To Best the Boys by Mary Weber. This involved a girl that lived in a society where the boys got to compete for a scholarship and the girls did not. But I think I ended up giving it like a two star and I plan on unhauling it. It was weird. The main characters were strange. They talked a lot about death and dissecting um, people as if it was normal. Sometimes they would talk in really like archaic flower language and other times they wouldn't. The competition itself was, was not much of the story. I want to read you a section of the end. So this is, I guess, spoilers. And maybe it was something I would have liked in like my teenage years. It says, my fingers on his anatomically perfect lips cut off the rest of his comment. I draw him into me until the atmosphere between us ceases to exist and it's just us, the sea, and the sky. He opens his mouth to speak again, but I'm already crashing in at the seams of my being as the ocean spray around us is swirling and following into wind and life and magic. And suddenly his hands are in my hair and his lips are on my cheek. Hand on hand, nerve on nerve, lip on lip, breath intertwined, burning to the ground, Everything in me belongs to me, but it also belongs to him. I just, uh, <laughs> I'm not in that place anymore. I, maybe I would have loved this when I was young. It's just not for me. <laughs> not for me. But yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Next book I picked up was Path of Daggers. It was book eight in the Wheel of Time. I'd started reading it, I think the month before actually, and finished it during April. I did enjoy this. I know this is kind of in one of those like slump areas. It didn't really bother me. I still marked about as much, maybe a little bit less. There were some characters that I wanted more of and some I wanted less of, but that's just what happens when you are in a 14 book series. So I think I gave this four stars. It was pretty good. It didn't stand out amongst the Wheel of Time books, but I think it held up in my opinion. Then I read Farmer's Boy. This is the second book Laura Ingalls Wilder, um, Little House on the Prairie series. It was a really good nostalgia book. I enjoyed it. Um, there were some things I even remember from when I read this a long time ago. And so that was fun. Um, and I, again, gave it a 3.5 stars. A lot of these books this month, these two months were just so middle of the road that it all blended together. But I do enjoy this series. I don't want to knock it at all because... I love it. It definitely suffers from a product of its time. It holds a special place in my heart. Then I picked up a graphic novel. This is The Promise Volume 1. It's or part one of volume one. So this is an Avatar series. It starts right after the last episode of the Avatar. And so they're trying to figure out what to do next, how to kind of unite the world. And it was okay. I can see where they're headed with this first part. Um, Zuko is having some issues with just the Fire Nation and just kind of trying to blend that all together. There was a lot of Katara calling Aang sweetie and it, I, that was really weird. <laughs> that was really weird. Did not like that, but otherwise it was pretty good. I listened to The Sorceress on audiobook. This is the third book in a YA series that I read the first book a long time ago and reread it recently. It has a lot of good mythological creatures in it. I like the direction that it's going. It involves two twins that are part of a prophecy. This was probably one of the better reads for this month just because it has so many cool creatures in it. So if you like good, like really cool beasts and YA, this is definitely a series to check out. It starts with a book called The Alchemist, and it also has characters that are supposed to be immortal, including um, William Shakespeare. <laughs> Another good read, I followed that up with Memoirs of a Geisha, which I really enjoyed. I think the ending was not 
what I wanted. And that brought it down a bit. I also think it was a little bit slow, but it was such an interesting look at the culture. And then I learned that uh, the author is a white dude that was writing about this culture and um it may not be that accurate so take that as you will i guess good book but i don't know if it's something i would recommend and i picked up this bad boy timeline by michael Creighton. i'd also read part of it and was very meh um but decided to keep pushing through and got to a page about 200 and just put it down which is so sad because I've heard the movie is good. I know the author is good, but this focused so much on like the physics and the medieval background aspects that it felt like I was in class and not in a good way. So this was not, not the book for me. I moved from that to the Austere Academy. This is book number five. Yeah. Oh my gosh. It said it right on. I'm trying to figure out what book it is. It says it right there. This is book number five. It was another good one. This series is solid. Even as an adult reading it, it still just tugs on my heartstrings and is enjoyable to read. I never know what's going to happen next. And that's hard to do sometimes. I know I'm not giving a lot of ratings. These are all just between three and four star. So Except for this next one, I listened to, or I read In an Absent Dream on my Kindle, which is the fourth book in the Wayward Children series. And I actually really loved this one. It is my favorites aside from the first one. I think my the first Wayward Children book is my one of my favorites because it's just an introduction to an incredible series. It's hard to match that level of amazingness again because it's not your first experience anymore. But this book is a very close second. I loved the character. I loved the struggle that was presented in this book because there's a struggle with each of them and a reason why these kids get picked to be in a different world for a while. I think this one just really hit home for me and the weighty decision, the relationships that were built so quickly in this novella. If you don't read any of the other Wayward Children's, definitely read one and four. I picked up Angels don't do karate. There's not much to say about this. It's just a nostalgia read. That's it. That's all this is. Fun nostalgia. I picked up A Sloth's Guide to Taking It Easy, which is just cute. Again, nothing to say. <laughs> just cute. And then I finished off the month with an audiobook, Shadow of the Fox. I needed to read a book with shadow in it for a readathon. And I was going to read Shadow of What Was Lost, but I just did not have time. So I went with an audiobook and I enjoyed it. It was really cute. I love the relationship that is happening. And I think that really sold it for me. That was really de the deciding factor between continuing on in the series and not continuing on. This involves a kitsune who has been charged with taking a secret scroll. And she has to team up with basically a guy who's wants to steal the scroll, but doesn't know she has it. So she says that she knows where it is and he can lead her to a temple. And he does not know that she actually has the scroll with her. So that was all of April. Now looking at May, my first audiobook was Daughter of the Moon Goddess. And I almost DNF'd this. It has such a beautiful cover, but I did not have a single character that I was attached to. It had a love triangle and not only did the one I was rooting for not win, he had a twist that made him so immediately unlikable. It was sad. And the main character is a girl who is the daughter of a moon goddess and her mom is actually trapped and she's trying to free her. And there were huge jumps in time. So instead of building any relationship, it would just kind of be like they trained together for years. So that leaves the reader not really building the relationship with the characters. And so it just felt, it didn't feel believable. I read a cute little book called Madame Eiffel about the guy building the Eiffel Tower for the girl he loves. Another just cute kids book. I read... Dracula. 
And I actually really enjoyed Dracula. There is definitely parts where it slowed down. And I think that's why it, again, is not making it into the top five. Because there is, like, three-fourths of the way through, I was like, okay, come on, come on. Let's just get to the part where we get to the final battle. And honestly, the final battle happened really fast and was not well explained. But... I certainly will add this to a list of classics that I would recommend reading and enjoyed, for sure. I did read like a little magazine called Incredible Inventions and it was missing pages and it was super outdated. So I actually just like recycled it because it was not even really technically a book, I realized. But I moved from that to Angels and Demons which again was really good, but just kind of also slow. Did Dracula and then DNF Timeline and then moved into this. And all of those were just a little bit too slow. And so by the time I was getting like three fourths away through this one, I, I was ready to be done with it. I loved the book. I just read it at the wrong time and behind two other books that were also a little bit slower. And that just doesn't, it didn't, it didn't work for me, but I think this is a good book still. And I'm glad I read it. To go along with Dracula, I read another one of my kids' books, Dracula Doesn't Drink Pink Lemonade. And then we'll finish off with another book that I plan on unhauling, and that was The Book of Even More Awesome. Guys, I was I was really excited to read this book. I thought it was going to be the fun book in the mix, and to be fair, it was. Like, there were a lot of good things, but the way this book is presented is it has, like, the fun thing at the top, and then like a little paragraph about the fun thing. And here's what I found. I really liked the ideas that were presented. Like I really enjoyed reading through a list of things that made me happy because some of them are things you don't think about all the time. However, the paragraphs that went along with each fun thing um, almost frustrated me because the writing style was very all over the place. Some of them rhymed unnecessarily. And it just made me, again, want to get through the book. I almost, almost just read the headings toward the end and then let it go, but I pushed through. If you've watched my TBR video, you know that in June, I am planning on reading books I'm just really excited for because after the two months with this pile of books, I needed to really just mood read for a bit, which I'm not usually a mood reader. I love a good list of books to get through. And I did technically make a list. It's just all the like big super hyped books. So if you haven't checked out that video, go ahead and find it somewhere. If any of these are like some of your favorite books, please let me know. There are some good ones. I will give you that. Wheel of Time book held up. Dracula held up. In an Absent Dream, amazing. Probably number six out of my top five. There were some good books, but they were just bogged down by a lot of three star. And so that's where we're at. Hopefully my June and July wrap up will be so much better than this. I will leave y'all and I will see y'all later.